Hello there, Kevin Culp again from Supermicro. We mentioned in previous podcasts about the buzz around GPUs and Supermicro GPU servers. However, we learned from talking to our customers that general purpose GPUs can be used as well in global enterprise data centers. Supermicro provides the enterprise a collection of servers we call golden SKUs, which are positioned well for enterprise data center workloads. Depending on the use case, Blade Servers, Big Twin, DC Cloud, and Hyper are what we refer to as our Golden SKU product suite. Supermicro's QA team goes through very extensive software testing and hardware qualification from both AMD, Intel, ARM, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm accelerators. You can look at our Supermicro marketing portal, www.supermicro.com, for more detail on what accelerators are supported with which particular applications or appliances. Today we've brought in a big twin within our sandbox looking deeper into lifecycle management collection. Big Twin with its multi-chassis platform design brings to your data center some interesting strengths with its versatile platform design. But today we're not going to talk about speeds and feeds but really focus on how important it is to perform lifecycle management within your enterprise. SuperCloud Composer is the right fit to support an enterprise at global scale. Next time, we will show you how blades are easily managed through SCC's unified dashboard. So let's get started. So we're going to log into uh, Global Admin. And uh, by logging into the global ad band, we're taken directly to the dashboard, the, uh, where all users essentially have read access to the dashboard. So let me give me a second and log in here, and let's take a look at our big twin in our sandbox. So here is the dashboard, like I mentioned, providing you a high level view, 20,000 foot view of what's happening within your data center. Uh, there's a collection of racks that are grouped together based on pods. Uh, next time we'll talk about the importance of optimizing our pod view uh, for be able to support at scale 20,000 monitored host. But in this particular uh, podcast, we're just going to look at lifecycle management of the Big Twin itself. So first and foremost, let's go to our Hallmark compute list, which is essentially showing all servers that have been registered under the jurisdiction of SuperCloud Composer. So performing lifecycle management, monitoring management, deployment of OS, configuring RAID, so on and so forth, depending on the, the, the application or your appliance. So in storage servers, we support uh, RAID, and we'll talk about a whole segment on really storage appliance is in, and how we bring to a very unique proposition to supporting uh, storage within your data center. So we're gonna plug in the IP address of this big twin. And um, once we do that, oops, I, uh, went ahead and had the wrong wrong IP address here. I'm in a different sandbox here, thinking here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna um, kinda note here is this idea of this drawer configuration. You know, what does that mean uh, within our platform? And really it applies to how a server has been registered within the rack. Uh, so we have a rack slot unit identification that we present uh, within our pod view virtualization. And you can think about a drawer as really occupying a slot uh, within that rack. And we really call it a drawer. And uh, depending upon the form factor of the server, it can occupy uh, many slots within the rack itself. Because this is a multi-chassis design platform, you see uh, in the system list, when we go up one drawer level, we have a two-node multi-chassis system. 
If we had a big twin, which was a four node, we would see four entities or four computes as part of that multi-chassis design of big twin. In this use case, we're basically looking at a two U, two node configuration. So I wanna to draw to your attention um, some important things that we expose within lifecycle management of the big twin. And that is really the product family. So we have a whole product family within Supermicro. We talked about the, the, the idea of product SKUs being essentially a uh, golden SKU, right? Uh, so here we have a product family of twin family. So there are other uh, twin members of that product family, fat twin, uh, uh, and so on and so forth, right? But in this case, we're gonna talk about big twin. And then we identify uh, the product SKU, we expose that, uh, what, how we know this is a big twin because it, it has in its nomenclature of its product SKU BT, which stands for big twin. And we also identify the motherboard type within um, the server itself, which is going to be very important later on when I bring out our automatic firmware update and scope-based access control and what we're thinking of providing uh, uh, a very li uh, a cool lifecycle management for auto firmware updates of both BIOS, BMC, and other firmware that needs to actually be flashed on each of our super micro appliances. We also see the product, the power status is being on and the node ID is basically saying it's composed or it's been allocated uh, from the pool of resources within a uh, super cloud composer. So let's go ahead and just draw this down here so you can look a little bit deeper at uh, the lifecycle management. On the top here, we have all the buttons that you can perform for lifecycle management very key of providing you all the various different tasks that you can perform for lifecycle management. That could be firmware updates of the BMC, that could be connecting into the IKVM of the, of the server. So that, that BMC, which is that integrated interface or that lights out interface we talked about in previous uh, videos, uh, that is the ability for you to connect in there to be able to manage or have a different way of getting in to the server from auto band versus you say perhaps SSHing or telnetting into that uh, server. Uh, the aspect of uh, array systems, so if you had simplified storage on this server uh, that you wanted to perform, say an erase, we have different mechanisms that you can do an erase. Uh, perhaps you want to shred all the contents on simplified storage, which is local to your converged server, you can do so there. And then also UID, uh, blinking the light uh, so that uh, you can identify which particular server uh, within your data center that may, may need to be physically pulled from the rack and uh, you know repair components within that rack. So a way to identify that server so that when you go into a data center and you have a number of racks that are out there and grouped into pods, it's very difficult to physically locate this server. So by blinking the, the blue light identifies that server that needs to be actually maintained. Uh, so again, the key is here from a management perspective is giving you the tools within your, uh, your, your uh, desk so that you don't have to go out and take a crash cart into the data center to be able to manage any of those lifecycle memory requirements that you need. You can do it right at your desk and perform those and make it easy for you to manage servers at scale. Uh, power management, powering on and off the server, performing graceful shutdowns. Uh, this can be done through our unified dashboard. Uh, tag management, uh, so if you were to deploy an operating system um, to this particular server, uh, by deploying the operating system, we identify the operating system that has been associated with the server 
or maybe you want to perform other tag management functionality such as uh, asset tracking of theft based on serial numbers, uh, the aspect of perhaps um, having a user defined tag on a special application that's running on that server and being able to provide that user defined tag yourself. Uh, being able to allocate or deploy an OS, uh, that is definitely something um, that we'll show you a little bit later in a section called deploying an operating system. So yes, SCC can deploy different operating systems uh, based on you know perhaps doing a Pixie boot uh, or um, potentially using our fast deploy option where we inject metadata into the build uh, and essentially uh, boot from SAN. So we have a whole entire iSCSI target uh, and also um, initiator set up within SuperCloud Composer that you're able to perform this particular specialized OS deployment. So let me also draw to your attention the aspect of this A and B kind of concept, right? So we have uh, what we call um, a 2U2 node, and we identify each of those on the physical marking of the server, which is A zone and B zone. So that's how we uniquely physically show you the differences between each of the servers. And then we identify that also for you within the platform so that you know, am I uh, looking at uh, performing lifecycle management for node A, am I uh, performing lifecycle management for node B itself. And then you can also go ahead and uh, click on uh, this BMC IP that would directly get you into the BMC and you can perform those lifecycle management uh, tasks as well. So the key here is we want to try to keep you from not going into the uh, BMC. Why? Is because it's important to minimize those number of clicks to perform a task, right? So we want to keep this within a flow here that uh, you can stay within the platform instead of going into the BMC to perform those tasks. Of course, you can go into the BMC to perform the tasks as well. We provide that flexibility for you to do so. The discovery state, uh, that is uh, something we talk about when a server comes online and gets uh, uh, discovered within uh, SCC. We have an initialization state where discovery goes out and performs what we call a deep discovery. So we, we learn about what's inside this physical server, what kind of components are in there to be able to perform the necessary lifecycle management. So that's what we're talking about when, when a server gets immediately booted, it goes through uh, a way where uh, we have these agents that are collecting Redfish endpoints uh, through the BMC, which is a source of truth. And then we perform this discovery state where it goes out and finds components and various different attributes within that server so that we can basically present that to administrators, you as an administrator, to know what's inside the server to be able to do what we call physical asset tracking. So let me also point out the aspect here of this, these icons, which a composed node is really resources that have been allocated to the server or an operating system has been um, uh, deployed. And then we are showing in good standing. So the health rollup, uh, we have three states of a health rollup within Redfish. We have what we call a good standing, we have a critical, and we have warning. And I mentioned in previous uh, uh, podcasts this, this notion of compliance and governance. So we have guardrails and safe, uh, safe uh, 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 rules that um, we introduce or we enforce within SCC so that you cannot go ahead and if, if you know a server is sitting at a health rollup of critical, 
you wouldn't want to be able to deploy an operating system, right? So you you go ahead and mitigate that that issue or fix the issue first, and then once the health rollup comes back, we allow you to deploy an operating system. Or if you already have an operating system that's deployed, we basically would you know turn off these buttons essentially, which indicates the fact is that um, you can't deploy an operating system because there's already one there, or maybe perhaps um, the operating system is deployed and you wanna be able to manipulate the attributes of the FRU and DMI. Um, we don't allow you to do that either because that would require you to reboot the server in order to do so. So uh, again, uh, the aspect of uh, what we call this our, uh, tree architecture that we provide and we've done a lot of work here in optimizing this tree architecture uh, based on the fact is now we're talking about tens of thousands of systems, right? So we're supporting 20,000 monitored hosts now. So we had to have a, a mechanism in place where we uh, uh, worked with uh, the developers to optimize the rendering of the screens so that they wouldn't be sluggish based on the number of systems that we actually support. So there's been some optimization based on PodView because of the real estate that exists within, within the platform itself. So you can, you can appreciate having to identify 10,000 systems and within our rack configuration, how would you visualize that within your PodView, right? So we've made some modifications there. We provide the ability for you to look up these systems quickly uh, so that you don't have to go through pages and pages of lists to determine what compute list or what uh, server you wanna perform that lifecycle management. All right, so let's click on um, dot one one. And uh, the first thing we want to go ahead and do is as I mentioned before, this aspect of compliance and governance, right? These are grayed out here. So um, there's already an operating system that's been deployed to this server. So we're not gonna allow you to perform any of the lifecycle management such as allocating a, no, a new OS to this server. Uh, we provide a carousel view on the top here, which identifies what's inside the server. And by putting your mouse in the carousel view window, uh, we stop the scrolling for you. Uh, and in this particular server, we have a lo no local GPU, we have no attached GPUs or attached FPGAs. So when we talk about attachment, we're talking about resource disaggregation. We'll talk about that in another podcast of the importance of where the industry is moving based on uh, what we call resource disaggregation and being able to use allocation of resources from a pool across a network fabric itself. Of course, we have all the physical asset information here that you can see within the server. This happens to be um, a, a Big Twin X13 platform. So it's the, the, the latest Intel based generation of um, processors within this server. It's a gold processor in here. We have a, a very small memory size here uh, because we're not running any workloads. We're not doing any performance benchmarking. We're just basically performing lifecycle management. Uh, serial number information, we have uh, BIOS uh, version, BMC version, so on and so forth. Um, so let's look at dot one one two because that's where we really have our, um, our GPU that we wanna go ahead and investigate, right? And take a look at. So um, again, same information, physical asset information, serial number, but I wanna draw your attention to now going to what we call the navigation icon. And that's really looking at deeper into the server, what's in there, right? So we wanna see what's, what's, what's there. So we have two processors, so this is a, um, uh, a double socket or a dual socket uh, server itself. Uh, so eight cores on both. 
So um, I'll show you the NUMA regions between the CPUs in a minute here, but I wanna draw your attention to really about um, having a GPU present in here. So uh, this aspect we talked about in previous podcasts called a converged server, right? We talked about in previous podcasts the 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 buzz around GPUs and in, in our GPU servers and performing AI and machine learning and DL, right? So you just don't have to you don't you know have to go and deploy a uh, deploy a large GPU server uh, for a data center, right? Uh, depending on your workloads, you could very easily um, pull in a big twin. Maybe you want to do some accelerated uh, software defined storage, which uh, is a very good use case uh, for a big twin, or maybe you want this particular server to perform some type of high performance compute uh, within a, a lab or something like that that you're doing based on your workloads. So um, we have a local GPU server, that's our, uh, our local GPU that's in this server, and so we've identified that in our carousel view. Again, I went ahead and um, stopped the scrolling. If you want to continue the scrolling, you just simply go out of the window and then we'll continue the scrolling. So the scrolling works, I think, at like every five seconds uh, kind of thing. Um, so memory, uh, let's look at memory. So different NUMA regions, right? So this particular server has 32 gig. Uh, not a not a large footprint as far as memory is concerned. Uh, again, uh, we're just um, providing exposure here, what we have in our sandbox to show you um, what we're performing for lifecycle management. Um, let's go up to the top here. Um, we can change the NUMA regions. You know, so you can look at one NUMA region that's associated with CPUs for the memory. We can uh, look at the other. NUMA region for CPU2 itself. So local storage again is storage uh, that's on this server. Uh, this server uh, essentially um, is performing um, a boot from SAN. So there's no, um, no storage that exists within this server. Um, again, um, to be able to uh, perform deep discovery uh, so that uh, we know that the drive exists there um, itself. So that would need to be performed on this server in order to determine if there were actually simplified storage in this drive. Uh, the, the different use cases about uh, attached storage, right? Uh, storage that perhaps may be across a PCIe switch, or maybe you have an NVMe over fabric initiator and target between using an RDMA Rocky construct, right? Where you have uh, big twins that are connected through RDMA Rocky and you're using standard ethernet base to connect these uh, 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 volumes uh, in, and expose them within our storage pool. And we'll get into that a little bit later on uh, different podcasts to talk about storage pools. So iSCSI, I mentioned the ability to do boot from SAN operations. So we have a whole initiator target uh, with pools of resources available within iSCSI um, storage. Uh, NIC, um, this, this particular NIC here um, is, it, is not connected. If it was, it would show link state here at this point. Uh, so we provide all link state now within each of our platforms uh, showing MAC address, model name, serial number, vendor, different uh, information. Um, and again, these will turn color such as if they're up, down, or not supported, right, at this point. Again, this is our sandbox testing environment. There's still development going on here. So some of this information may not be exposed. We're still validating different cards and exposing link state and so on and so forth. But just showing you the capability of the platform and, and what exists on it. So let's uh, drill down to GPU. So very, very useful information here now that's provided within our um, 
life cycle management of GPUs. So a general purpose L40S uh, is what we have here. So this is the, the, the next L40 series generation that NVIDIA has basically um, um, created. And we show, you know, slot information. So we show you what slot it's connected into. Um, and then we also show you the model. Uh, it's a Gen 5 PCIe type. Uh, we're reporting that the GPU has good health. So we do check the health of the GPU. Uh, the lanes in which we're occupying uh, for this GPU, serial number, part number, and firmware version. And by clicking here, we also show you some uh, information such as the memory that's inside this GPU uh, to perform those copy operations uh, for the GPU itself, right? And this memory we're utilizing within the GPU. So uh, that information is provided as well. And then if we go down, um, we talked about FRU and DMI earlier, uh, providing information here that, again, you can uh, go ahead and manipulate those attributes. Perhaps you have to replace the motherboard uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's uh, malfunctioned or is, has a problem with it. So we provide the ability for you to make changes uh, within our platform instead of having to utilize a utility such as SUM or IPMI tool to do that, right? So this is, again, this idea of providing you a unified dashboard for the enterprise. Yes, you can go do all this information through utilities, but that is not important for an enterprise. An enterprise uh, wants a unified dashboard to be able to perform lifecycle management. You know, utilities um, are really kind of positioned at our OEM business and uh, you know some of the software vendors that are taking some of those utilities and utilizing them for their particular software requirements. Uh, so again, um, unified dashboard is a message. If you talk about uh, these utilities and being able to uh, manage uh, different uh, attributes through the utilities, that creates a fragmented solution for the enterprise, right? So the focus is unified dashboard. I want one place where I can perform my day zero, day one, and day two lifecycle requirements. Let's look at DMI. Uh, DMI, same thing. Um, we're able to manipulate that. We show you basically the various different uh, type of uh, processor generation is there uh, for Intel Sapphire. Uh, and so all of this information is provided uh, in uh, pulling this information from what we call the DMI or the FRU. And we talked about this um, in a previous podcast about the extensive testing that's being done within Supermicro. We, we, within our production facility, we do what we call C-Burn which is iterations of testing of, you know, booting the server, uh, performing all posts, making sure memory's okay. So all of this extensive testing is done in our production facilities before we basically send it out uh, to the customer. So all of this information is being pulled from the FRU and the DMI. All right, so let's move to now the performance metrics collection, right? How well is my GPU performing, right? And so we're gonna uh, click here, and we, we talked about the performance uh, metrics collection in a previous video with GPU servers, uh, but we're going to now focus really on looking at the metrics associated with this big twin in this L4DS that we have within this server. And um, the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is it is an NVIDIA uh, type of um, accelerator that's inside this server and it is an L40S, right? So um, again, you don't have to go back to the physical asset uh, area and try to say, okay, what was that, G what was that accelerator that was in that big twin? So we provide you those unique information in different screens to help you 
perform the necessary lifecycle management you need to do with your server. Um, so on the right hand side, I want to talk about the uh, ability to pull uh, uh, data, right? Data points from this, this uh, GPU server. Uh, or, or excuse me, this converged server that has a accelerator in it. And so we can go ahead and um, pull with different intervals to collect those that metadata um, itself. Um, and then we can also click here for a look back window, right? Um, be able to do historical trending and how well my, um, my particular um, workloads are performing. What we will eventually do is we will be able to allow you to dump those data points into an Excel spreadsheet uh, through a common delimited file or a CSV file. And then you can take those data points uh, and then um, ex or import them into pivot tables and run very fancy reports for your executive leadership. Or maybe you want to do capacity forecast planning or different kinds of uh, things that you want to do from an anal analysis perspective, right? We provide that capability in our monitoring detail, which I will show you in a, a few moments. Uh, but here, we're going to also take that same theme and apply it into uh, what we call performance metrics. Let's also show you the number of servers that are have accelerators in them uh, and we associate them uh, at a drawer level and then also at a rack level and also at a pod level. So drawer levels are a part of a rack. Racks are part of pods. You could have a group of racks together based on common workloads and we'll talk about that in another series of um, pod view. And um, we also go uh, also provide you with um, widgets um, that you can collect, right? So there are different metrics that you want to collect and to find out how well your workloads are running. So all of this information is provided. So you build your own custom dashboard, which is Grafana-like, and we provide all that information uh, for you. So let's go ahead and perhaps put the G GPU temperature, right? You can also do a max, a min, a sum, or an average. Uh, let's do it at the unit level. And let's do a gauge meter, because I always, I, always, I always think these gauge meters are really cool um, and um, what they look like. And um, you can do an extra large, large, standard, small. Let, let's, let's do a small one, right? And save it. And at that point in time, uh, what will happen is we'll cook basically um, uh, one of those, uh, those uh, uh, charts that we're providing here. Looks like we're having a little bit of a problem with our sandbox here. So hopefully it will come back again. And um, what we uh, have done here is we cr created um, a, um, in the list here, if I scroll down, um, the temperature of that, uh, of that particular uh, GPU server, right? Uh, so we can make changes uh, to the GPU unit power draw. So if we wanna shrink the size of this chart, we can make it as standard and shrink it. And so now it's shrunk, right? And maybe we wanna go ahead and move these uh, around so that we um, can see um, various different uh, metrics that we're collecting, right? So maybe we wanna do a small here for this one too and see if we can now move it up into this area here. Uh, no, it's, so let's reduce the size of this one to small, and let's see if we can move that one up to here. 
Yes. So you can arrange uh, your um, metric collection so that you can customize your dashboard the way you want to look at different metrics that you want to basically collect. So that is the performance metrics and looking at GPUs uh, themselves. So let's look at um, information about, say, BMC information, or we want to look at uh, what we call Redfish selection uh, subscription services for a BMC, right? So um, this is showing you at the pod level. Let's plug in the IP address of that server. Jeez, I'm having a bad typing day here for some reason. Let's look at that. Maybe I better type it again here. Let's have him in a bad finger day here for some reason. All right, we finally found it. Um, so click here. And what we see here is BMC information. Now, of course, we're not going to see BMC information uh, for events that may be happening at this particular time step in this minute. Uh, we can certainly click here to look at more events. So by looking at more events, we'll look at previous events that were happening specifically for this, this server itself. Um, and you can see here, we provide that list. Now, of course, if you wanna go back in time and look at various other alerts that are happening um, within this server, then you go up to your date window um, here, which is the date picker, and you can go back in time. Uh, and look at various different events that are um, being logged to this server. So again, I want to emphasize the fact is that um, we've subscribed to Redfish subscription services associated with this server. And the source of truth is always the cell, which is the session event log information, and, and mail, which is message event log, is maintained on the server, right? So we're exposing that information from the unified dashboard. But the source of truth is always on the BMC. So if you want to clear events associated with the BMC, uh, then those events need to be cleared within the actual server itself through the BMC, right? We don't provide a mechanism within the server to be able to cl uh, clear that because we believe, again, the source of truth is essentially the server BMC. Uh, the other information I want to show you here um, is really about how you can look at uh, different attributes or different charting associated with onboard sensor data. Uh, so some of this information we, we perhaps may be zero because we're not running any workloads associated with this server, but let's take a look at it and see what we uh, can uh, take a look at. So the processor bandwidth, of course, no, no uh, workloads are running. We would uh, certainly report zero bandwidth that's, that's happening there. Um, CPU information, um, we're, we're clocking at 4,000 uh, megahertz. Let's see if we're consuming any power uh, or watts. We are. Uh, shows you the CPU charting. Um, by moving your uh, mouse across here, we can see different uh, data units or delta units that are provided uh, through a time chart or series of uh, data points. And we can do it on each server again, right? So you can look at CPU one or CPU two, right? Um, so looking at consume watt uh, associated with CPU one, we're looking at it or CPU two. Let's see if our, what our temperature, showing our temperature um, pretty much uh, flatlined, which we would like to see that because that's obviously showing us it's a controlled uh, environment. 
By the way, our processors and our, our systems run pretty hot, right? So they're very rugged and can run in optimal uh, types of environment, you know, different types of environments. So um, that is typical that a temperature of 38 degrees is roughly where we uh, run there. So that's perfectly fine. And you can see that is uh, basically flat lined at that number. And of course, uh, temperature might increase as we put more particular workloads that are running on the server. We would expect it to see, you know, at a, a flat line, right? Based on, you know, fans kicking in, you know, and, and, and all those environmental variables that exist within the chassis itself. Um, so we're looking at this server's information, right? If we wanted to go up to the drawer configuration, we can look at uh, unique different um, attributes or sensor data from the chassis. And I'll show you that in a, in a few moments. So again, we can look at bandwidth information. We're not really using any memory um, at this point because the workloads are running. And then we also provide you with memory to, uh, total consume watts itself and then also temperature um, that exists here and we provide the health status of each of those dims so if the dims were behaving behaving incorrectly it would be reported within a uh, super cloud composer so that's at a server level those details so let's walk it up to really the next level, which is the drawer configuration. Remember, we had two nodes within this server. So now we're gonna walk it up into the drawer configuration and we're going to see you know, different information. We're gonna see the system performance uh, for each of those servers themselves. And we're also going to see um, both node A and node B right, that we can look at. And by clicking here, it will directly get you into um, the monitoring detail information for that node, which I showed you um, just uh, previously, right, if we were to uh, uh, connect back in there to each node. So at one, t at one point in time with our developers, they were doing some testing and running workloads here. Uh, you see some activity here. So by just moving it across here, you can see uh, system performance um, that's occurring. Again, we have the ability to go back in a date window. And let's, uh, before we get into looking at uh, the navigation um, here for the drawer, let's click here on the dump. So the dump is what I mentioned previously about dumping all the sensor data associated with this drawer. So that's all the nodes that are associated. If you wanted to dump just the node information, you can do so as well. But this, because we're at the drawer level, we're gonna dump data for both node A and also node B. And we simply uh, would go ahead and collect that. We would submit it. You, you see here, we can do system processor bandwidth metrics. All that data is available to you that you can chart through say a pivot table through Excel, right? So we provide a common delimited file, CSV file that you can look at. So that's our first kind of look at observability. Uh, very easily we direct this to um, observability engine and feed all this data in there to do some prediction um, uh, for observability there. All right. Uh, so let's go back to the navigation. The navigation itself, uh, we can look at power that's being utilized for those power supplies. So we have the output supply. You can run across here and see those values. And you can also look at uh, consume watt. Uh, so how much watts we're using uh, for each uh, power supply. And then we can look at um, fan speed. So we can show you fan speed. Looks like um, these revved up a little bit around 4,900. Uh, perhaps we were running some workloads or something was going on here uh, within the sandbox for testing um, itself. And then you also have what we call uh, temperature, right? Temperature, uh, which is the inlet temperature of the chassis, 
right? So we're actually looking at um, and collecting that to make sure that ambient temperature remains flatline for each of those two nodes within the chassis itself. So uh, that's all I have for life cycle management on our 2U2 two node big twin that we brought into our uh, sandbox for giving you a look on life cycle management for big twin. Um, all of these uh, life cycle management can be done through our golden SKUs, uh, Cloud DC, Big Twin, Hyper, and Blades. Uh, next time we're gonna bring in um, the Blade, talk about that, show you how we're performing life cycle management and how it's easily uh, you're able to navigate through our unified dashboard to provide you life cycle management for blades. Uh, perhaps you have many blade enclosures across uh, different racks and so you need some insight on how you're going to manage top of rack switch provisioning, how you're going to uh, plumb out VLANs to those interconnect switches that are inside the enclosures, how you're going to deploy an operating system. All of these are available within SuperCloud Composer. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. My name is Kevin Kalt, PM Head of Cloud Management Solutions. I bid you a great day. Thanks again for joining.